In Creole Parametric, there is a motor profile in Mechanisms Mode called SCCA, and that stands for Sine Constant Cosine Acceleration, and it's used for simulating a CAM profile. Now, I'll be honest, I do not completely understand SCCA, but let me explain to you what I do understand about it. Here I have a mechanism open on my computer screen. It is for counting numbers. Let's jump over to mechanism mode by going to applications and then mechanism. And you can see that there are a bunch of symbols in the graphics area indicating our different mechanism entities. They are really cluttering up the screen. So I'm going to use the mechanism display command to turn some of them off. The purple stuff that you see, those are the cams that are being displayed. And let's leave everything else on. So let's click the OK button. And to create a motor that uses SCCA, you are going to click on the servo motors command. Or alternatively, you can select a joint axis in the graphics area. And then, oops, didn't get it. Let's select a joint axis and then choose servo motor from the mini toolbar. And right now we're on the references tab. You can see that's got the joint axis listed in there. I'll go to the profile details tab. And right now the driven quantity is angular position. If I go to the function type drop down list, you are not going to see SCCA. Let's change the driven quantity to angular velocity. Once again, we do not have SCCA. And since I selected a rotational axis, here we have the ability to do a torque motor. And once again, no SCCA. One thing to be aware about this particular profile, you can only use it for driving the angular acceleration. So after I choose that and then go to the motor function, hey, here we have SCCA, that sine constant cosine acceleration, and I will select it. You can see that there are four different coefficients that we have here, A, B, H, and T. And in order to explain these to you, I'm going to jump over to MathCAD. So here is a worksheet that I have created to try to explain some aspects of this particular motor profile. And again, we have the H, that stands for the amplitude, T, that's the period of the motion, and then we have those A and B constants, and there's actually another one, C. So A is the fraction of normalized time for the increasing acceleration, that's this portion and this portion over here. And then B is the fraction of normalized time for the constant acceleration. That's this flat period here and this flat area over there. And C is the fraction of the normalized time for the decreasing acceleration. So again, the SCCA defines the acceleration profile of your motor. One thing to note is that these fractions A, B, and C have to add up to one. So that's again, the normalized time of your period. And so here I have the equations for the increasing period. You can see that it is a function of the different values for the fractions of the increasing constant or decreasing acceleration and also the amplitude and the period. And by the way, the way I created this graph in MathCAD this would actually be a very complicated piecewise continuous function if you are aware of those. I'm going to use this little bar on the side of my worksheet to switch to the draft view. I found it much easier to use a program in order to graph the profile. And this is very complicated. It's got a bunch of different if statements in there using something I haven't done in any of my previous MathCAD videos before. I actually used the AND operator, the logical AND, for joining a couple of conditions together in my if statement. So just be aware of that. Let's collapse the operators menu. If I go to the document 
tab, I can change back to the page view so that we don't see that long program in there. But again, this is the profile of the acceleration that you would get for running your motor. Now let's jump back over to Creo Parametric. Okay, so A, that is the fraction of the normalized time for increasing acceleration. You'll see in a lot of the different CAM profiles, they use a value of 0.25, and then we have our value for the fraction of normalized time for the constant acceleration, you'll see 0.5 a lot. That means the fraction of time for the decreasing acceleration is going to be 0.25, just like the amount of time for the increasing acceleration. And here we have our amplitude, and this is in degrees per second squared. And I was thinking that I want the amplitude to somehow end up in a motion of 36 degrees because I have a counter here with 10 digits. So I want it to be able to move through one digit for each operation of the cam. So somehow I want 36 degrees in there and I was playing around with the numbers. Let's just try an amplitude of 100 to begin with. And here we have our period. This is a value of one second. I'm fine with that. And here we have the graph buttons. So if I click on the graph button, you can see, yep, that looks like the same acceleration profile that I had in MathCAD. But let's also graph the position and the velocity on there. So you can see in the light blue, this is going to be the velocity that will be imparted. And then we have this line over here for the change in the angular position. And if you hover your mouse over the little dots, it will tell you the value. So if I use an amplitude of 100, then the position will end up changing through about 20 degrees and some change. And if I plug in a different value here for the H, I happen to know if I do a value about 180, then we're going to end up if, with a value over here on the end that is just over 36 degrees and some change. So how do you change H in order to get the amount of rotation that you want in this? I don't know. It's some kind of integral of all of this. But that is how you set up the SCCA motor. I will hit the check mark to complete the motor definition. And I'll be honest, I do not have a good scenario for showing you how you would use SCCA or its uses. I just made a motor with the SCCA profile. I'm not even going to create a me mechanism analysis because Again, I'm not sure what I would be getting out of using that. But if you have any good scenarios for SCCA, hey, please leave a comment for the video and maybe I'll be able to create my part two of this video where I show you this is how you actually use SCCA in a mechanism analysis. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshow.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.